Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ati Allah, Ati Ya Rasulu Ulil Amri Minkum. And always a reminder for myself, Ana Abduka la jisu da'ifahu, miskeenu zalimu jahad. And but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah, what we said in that last Nafta Sharif? Jinsatu bika ishqihi. Allah, in Farsi that would teach us that your, your jins, your, your value is based on your ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad And that in this holy month of Zulqidah and the reality of eleven and the reality of what gives us value in Divinely Presence. And so many don't know and they perceive their value as their worshipness. And they think that if they worship perfectly, they worship extensively that they have a value to Allah And these awliya of marifa whom we described before the awliya whom they take from Wajikal Kareem, the blessed and Divinely face of Allah that can never be seen in the oceans of huwa, the complete unknown unmanifest reality of Allah that graciously dresses the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ's Divinely face. The seven Divinely attributes that illuminate all of creation, empower all of creation, sustain all of creation. Fountain of every abundance, fountain of every knowledge, fountain of every reality flowing to that face of generosity known as Muhammadun Rasulullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs. Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. And from those awliya souls that are not all, that's when you come across servants of Allah in which their understanding is something different. They feel their status with Allah is based on their worshipness, the correctness of their worshipness, the excessiveness of their worshipness. And all of that is ananiya, all of that is in finding value in oneself. Whether you find your value as a dunya person, and your outright oppressor say, do you know who I am? I am the Pharaoh, Most High. All the way to the other scale of one being content in their worshipness, their level of purity, their level of understanding. And they believe that through their fasting, through their worshipping, through their hajj, through their physical action they have a value with Allah 
they didn't yet understand the nukht. And these awliya whom they annihilated in their annihilation, they came back to existence to teach that the true jewel of reality is not in yourself, not in anything that yourself can do. But what? What gives us value? Jinsatu kabe ishqifi. The only value that you have to Allah is that your love for Sayyidina Muhammad How pure is that love? How beautific is that love? How sincere is that love? Why? Because Allah is a hidden treasure wanting to be known. If they didn't get La ilaha illallah huwa Muhammadun Rasulullah it's still not known to them. Those whom know, they know. They know their value, their gents is only as beautific and only as valuable as their ishq and love for Sayyidina Muhammad because whom is the perfect worshipper of Allah Prophet So do you see how that the immensity of oceans of tawheed, if you're competing to worship Allah there's no better worshipper than Sayyidina Muhammad Get yourself out of the way, become a nukht in which is non-existent and all that exists within that nukht is ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad which is the ultimate ishq of Allah because all of it's based on, Ya Rabbi I, I want to approach you, Qul ini kuntum Allah. We're asking Ya Rabbi that we, we want your love and your command to my wujud and to my soul and my very existence, fatabi'uni, fatabi'uni. I don't want to see you in your own ocean, I don't want to see you in your own competition, I don't want to see you as if you're going to compete with your worshipness, compete with your fast, compete with anything because none of it has any comparable value to the worshipness of Sayyidina Muhammad So these level of awliya they understood that become a nuh. Annihilate, they took a life into which annihilate and everyone else annihilates them. Criticize, ridicule and attack and it's okay because they still think that they're worshipping Allah trying to please with their form and with their actions. And the ultimate reality is that the value of my gents, my soul, my light, my entire being, what gives a gem its reality? What makes a ruby to be a ruby? It's reflection from what Allah dressing of its Divinely lights. And all of these lights come from the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah So these pearls. Because the world of form is, is a ruby because it has a form and it's rare. But the ruby of the heavens is not a form, it's a hue of light. And the rarity of that light is based on its Muhammadiyun reflection. And the souls of these awliya and all that they bring along on their path, they bring into that spectrum into the hue of that reality. Because what we found as a reality of manifestation was what? Based on sound. 
the light in which you manifest in malakut, that light is what Allah is, is giving for us an understanding, your jins, not your physicality but your, your being, your entire light and the essence in which Allah creates you, bi'ishqihi, its value is based on its ishq of Prophet the, the amount in which you resonate, the amount in which you have love, the amount in which your khuluq al azim you're inheriting from this good character because the good character completely keeps burning and incinerating the impurities within your stone, within the jewel of your being and your praise, your love and your ishq and moving into that reality it grants the hue and the color of your gem. Means these gemstones are radiating at lights because of their love for Prophet And these are the jewels that Allah wants to see, قُلْ فَتَّبِعُونِي قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّنُ اللَّهِ Tell them in this oceans of reality, not in dunya, فَتَّبِعُونِي their whole existence is to follow you with their life, with their wealth, with their possessions, with their entire being. And when you follow with love and good character and you begin with your durood and your salawats and your actions and your service, the spectrum of your light is changing to beautific lights. And as much as you love the hue of the light becomes more and more beatific and these become gems and divine the presence of what Allah is looking for. I want to see the Muhammadan lights upon their soul. When Allah looks to the garden of Muhammadun Rasulullah that beautific garden he wants to see the hue of these lights emanating like gems from their soul and from their heart. And the only way they can achieve that is by the love of Sayyidina Muhammad because that was the reality of where La ilaha illallah is hidden. When Allah says, I'm a hidden. I'm a hidden reality wanting to be known, I will never be known. But Qabil Mu'min Baytullah, I'm not on heaven nor on earth but I'm on the heart of my worshipper. If you enter into his heart and you enter into his heart means you find the reality of La ilaha illallah. And Allah wants to see these lights, wants to see the value of their soul based on the beatific reflection of Muhammadun Rasulullah And this becomes the essence of that ayna, essence of that mirror, the essence and the reality of the eleven, essence and the reality of the Zulfiqar. Where La ilaha illallah reflects and gives the power to Muhammadun Rasulullah And the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah is the only reality that can open up within its heart the reality of La ilaha illallah. Nobody can enter into La ilaha illallah without going through the door of Muhammadun Rasulullah because they can't enter tawheed without Prophet Every nation has their, their fault. The nation of Sayyidina Isa they took to worshipping him. The nation of Sayyidina Musa they took to worshipping and waiting for a man who will call himself God and they all became butparast. But the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad they can never enter into that reality because the secret of La ilaha illallah is in the heart and in the soul and the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah So you see how this side, this sword of Zulfiqar hits you both ways. 
Means there's no way to say, I'm going to go on the door of La ilaha illallah. I'm going to leave everything but La ilaha illallah. Allah says, you'll never reach that without the knife of Muhammadun Rasulullah that comes to take the nafs and bad character and take the servant to the oceans of that reality. So only by coming through the door of Muhammadun Rasulullah can that reality and the oceans of La ilaha illallah and real tawheed enter into the reality of the servant. And what La ilaha illallah is looking for, for these awliyaullah and those whom follow them is what? Is your gents, the value of your soul, the value of your goods, of, of what have you achieved on this earth that I sent you? Because others are coming with bags of goods, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that, there's a different level. But those whom they divorce themselves of fear of hell and want of paradise and all that they asked for from Allah was, Wajikat Kareem, we want, we want that which never perishes, we want the presence of the holy face. And Allah sent to them, then accompany these, these saints whom they feed you and they ask nothing from you that you could give to them that has a value. But what they ask from Allah is that keep us within the Divinely face, the holy face of Allah which reflects La ilaha illallah, reflects to the face and the soul of Muhammadun Rasulullah And that the seven holy openings of humanity that to take that dress and to, to be nourished by those lights and those holy openings, this is the greatest achievement and it's not understood but by a handful because you can see the pride in their actions. The pride in their worshipness, the pride in their words. The one whom took a path of nukht understands their salah has no value, their sum has no value. Not anything from their physical world has a value. They do is not the end but the means. My shahada was not the, the end of my journey that gave me who I am, was a means in which to enter this path. My salah, because after your, your shahada is what? Qum the salah. My salah was what? The means to everything I reached, I achieved everything in life. Or Allah saying, that's at the beginning, it's not the end. You just made your shahada, now you came to your salah. The salah is the, is, the, is the means in which to reach the end so that you understood your life of service and being nothing and there was nothing to be proud of. They came to the zakah, they gave of their money, they gave of their time. And in the end they gave of their life and service in the way of that reality. And still Allah says, it's not the goal, it's not the end, we don't give you a trophy because you did that. It was merely still your means in which to reach what you need to reach. The journey hasn't ended by that. So they went for hajj. They went for their psalm and their fasting so that to enter into a state of, of, of purity and compassion and mercy they did their fasting. And again they can't have pride in the fact that they fast, they fast better than other people or we fast and other nations don't fast. Because Allah says, these are the keys to what I'm going to open for you but it is not the goal, it's not the, it's not the reward. Now we're entering into the month of Hajj and the Hijrah and the pilgrimage to the reality that for 12 months we have been journeying on this. So that what? 
to receive the payday from Allah can come to Jabal Rahmah because all of Hajj is the mountain of Rahmah, the mount of Arafah in which all your qurban and all your sacrifice, the qurban is the part and the contract is that catches everything that's wrong. Everything that I'm going to dress you with of your 12 months of journeying, every deficiency I will take with that qurban. And that's why Allah described the qurban as an immense ransom because the deficiency in Sayyidina Ibrahim that he couldn't accomplish what Allah wanted him to accomplish. So Allah then we gave you an immense ransom because these 10 days are the 10 days in which Allah is dressing and completing His favours upon the servant. And they understood that all of these pillars of Islam was a means in which to enter into these oceans of value in which if they did what Allah asked of them and they purified and perfected and cleansed themselves and took a path, a path of the nuqt in which they understood it's not the salah that gives them honour, it's not the fasting that gives them honour, it's not the zakah that gives them honour. It was all a means in which to be a nuqt and the honour was in the nuqt in which Allah said that you annihilated yourself, now let me show you the kingdom. That you didn't put a value on your physicality, you disciplined your physicality like a donkey at these stations, tell the donkey to believe, tell the donkey to pray, tell the donkey to give its zakah, tell the donkey to, to make its fast, tell the donkey now to enter its hijrah to reach its reality because these are the actions of the mulk. But Allah give the reward to the malakut, to the soul that riding upon that servant. And if the soul of the servant truly understood that the reward from Allah is not for my donkey but for me, for all of eternity. My job on this life was to tame my beast, not to crown it. You getting? Others they're thinking to crown the beast. They put a crown on their donkey, say, look how nice this donkey prays, your people don't pray good. Look how nice this donkey fast, you don't fast good. Look how nice this donkey does this. That wasn't the goal. The goal was the donkey to be obedient and obliterated, to be brought down and humble in which Allah can put the crown upon the servant, that you humbled your beast in My presence, you took away the importance of your beast on My path and as a result I made it to be qashiyah like dust. And you understood the true value is your soul and that you resonate and vibrate Muhammadun Rasulullah and your nasheeds and salawats and durood and your ishq is directed in the direction in which Allah wants fatabiuni and as a result your soul mubashiran is emanating beatific lights and beatific hues of every dimension. Wasn't that the song from Abida Parveen in that nut of that those shaykhs? Who I saw the lights of Imam Ali and Imam al Hussein and Imam al Hassan and they were moving in the lights of Nabi Ahmad and the beatific hue of these lights were moving in these oceans of reality. Huh? Because their jism. Their entire being had reached a value for Allah that you made your lights, you came to this earth 
Not that you camped and glorified your donkey, cleaned your donkey, crowned your donkey, but you understood, no it was your soul that had to achieve these lights and these realities. And you had to find me with your soul and I'm a hidden treasure and you found me in the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah that I reflect my names and attributes in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah and that every time Allah praises the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah is praising Himself and His Divinely Self. And Allah then Prophet said, Ya Rabbi nobody can praise you like you deserve to be praised and how you praise yourself. So when Prophet, when Allah is describing Prophet khuluqul azeem, Allah is praising Himself because He gave the characteristic of the greatness and He dressed it upon the greatest of His signs, the reality and the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad we pray that Allah open for us the realities of this eleven and this mirror and Allah open for us to be busy with our durood the sharif, to listen to the salawats, to have the love and the ishq, the character and the beauty of Sayyidina Muhammad and that to be dressed in dunya and in akhirah to be raised with these lights and blessed with these lights. This is the key to our salvation and the key for protection against the dajjal and every darkness and fitna that enters upon this earth. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.